Right, energetics, let's do this. There's three equations you need to know regarding enthalpy change. So let's go through them. They're all very similar. Enthalpy change, enthalpy change, enthalpy change. Okay. So the first one is going to be when you're given data regarding something called enthalpy or formation. So if we look at the equation here, all of these enthalpy changes that I'm referring to is actually our enthalpy change of reaction. Okay, but I'm just going to give it the symbol enthalpy change because that's how you're going to be writing it in your exam for the most part. Okay, this is going to be the sum of our enthalpy change of formation. Uh, formation. And this is going to be our products specifically as the first portion of the formula minus sum of enthalpy change formation, exactly the same thing, but it's going to be for our reactants this time. Okay, very easy equation. I'm going to give you the symbols for this because it's going to be like the shorthand version. So you can chuck it on the page in your exam. You can remember it like this to make things a bit faster for you. So it's going to be the sum of enthalpy formation um, products minus sum of enthalpy formation reactants. All right. This lowercase f just signifies that this is the enthalpy of formation. Okay. Super easy stuff. Now you're going to see these next two equations are super, super similar. Okay. The next one is going to be when you're given data regarding combustion. So not formation, combustion. And you're going to see how similar this is. Okay. Enthalpy change of combustion. I'm just going to put comb of, is it going to be products again? No, it's actually reactants. Okay. And this is just due to how the Hess cycle is formatted. I'm not going to go through Hess cycles in this video. I'm just going to go through the formulas. So the only difference here is that these are flipped around. Okay. So in this one, the products are positive but they're going to be negative here and the reactants are negative. They're going to be positive here. Okay. Just remember that and you're going to be all good to go. So this is going to be the sum of enthalpy change of combustion and products. Okay. Going to do symbols again, just to speed it up for you guys. This is going to be enthalpy change equals sum of enthalpy of combustion reactants minus some enthalpy combustion products. Okay. See how similar they are. They just flipped around. Right. Third and final one for enthalpy change here. Very similar again, but slightly different. And this is going to be for mean bond enthalpy or mean bond association enthalpy, however you want to call it. Okay. Mean bond enthalpy. What does the equation for this look like? It's going to be the sum of, okay, the bond energy is broken. Bond energy is broken minus the sum of bond energies formed. Bond energies formed. Okay, or made, however you want to remember it. Now, another way to think of this that I actually remember is exactly the same as this. So I just remember the enthalpy, oh, sorry, the sum of the bond energies in the reactants minus the products. Okay, and that's because the bond energies are broken within the reactants and then formed within the products. Okay, now, very important caveat here for this reaction to be able to be used. All substances must be gases that you incorporate into this expression. It's going to be enthalpy change again equals the sum of. Now, you can use a few different symbols here. Whatever you remember is going to get you the marks because you're going to get the right answer. I remember capital D, and this capital D is just bond association. Okay, that's what I remember it as bond association energy. And it's going to be for, you can either remember it as B for bonds broken, or you can remember it as R for reactants. Okay, up to you. I'm going to do it as R because that's how I remember it. Minus sum of bond association energy of products. Okay, that's how I remember it. Again, you can obviously switch out this product for an F for formed or M for made, the symbols honestly don't matter. It just allows you to remember what variables you need to include and get the right answer. 
Right, so we've covered all of the enthalpy changes for energetics. Let's look at the thing that's involved in calorimetry. Q equals mc delta t. Okay, this Q I've written, I've written it as lowercase, but you will see it sometimes as capital Q. They mean exactly the same thing. Don't freak out. Okay, this Q is going to be energy change or heat energy or heat energy change. Whatever you're looking at, that's what that's going to be. And this is joules. Okay, that is our energy unit for Q. M, this is going to be our mass specifically of the solution. Okay, and that is going to be in grams. Okay, mass of solution in grams. This C right here, you don't need to remember what this is in terms of the actual value. It's always given to you, but it's the specific heat capacity. Okay, and this is the specific heat capacity of water, and the unit for that is joules per gram per Kelvin. Okay, capital T or delta T, I should say, this right here, this is change in temperature. Okay, and that is going to be in Kelvin. Now, the reason that it's in Kelvin is because we have to keep our units consistent. So if you look at our specific heat capacity right here, we have joules done grams done kelvin done okay so we have to keep our units consistent now when we're talking about temperature change right let's say we have degrees celsius and we have kelvin to go from one to the other you just do 273 plus 273 right do not make the mistake of thinking that you need to convert the temperature change i've seen this time and time again with my students right what you need to think, let's say we have degrees Celsius. Um, let's do degrees Celsius first, right? And let's say we started at 25 degrees Celsius and we went to 30 degrees Celsius. This is plus 5 degrees Celsius. What you need to do is you need to convert the initial temperature and the final temperature. So 25, uh, 25 sorry, would become 298 Kelvin because we're adding 273. And then 30 is going to be 303 Kelvin because we're adding 273. Okay, what is the difference between these two It is plus five Kelvin. So what I want you to take away from this is the temperature change, regardless of the units used, is always going to be the same value, five, or whatever the temperature change happens to be in the question, right? What you need to think is that the, the conversion happens with the initial and the final. So never do this, and I've seen this quite a lot, where they add five to this, and it, uh, add 273 to the five, sorry, so it becomes 278, and then that is their temperature change in Kelvin. No, that is not correct. Okay, I've seen, I've seen this so much. Okay, so try and avoid that mistake, but just remember, in the actual equation, the unit is Kelvin, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub this out because we need to talk about how you convert Q into enthalpy change, which is what you're going to have to be doing in all of these sort of calculation questions, right? So what we need to think is how do we convert Q into delta H, okay? So our Q unit is joules. Our enthalpy change unit is kilojoules. So our unit for energy is actually changed and it's also per mole, okay? So what you have to do is you have to convert the energy value from joules into kilojoules. How do we do that? You divide by a thousand. And then we have to incorporate the next step of the unit, which is dividing by moles. Because kilojoules per mole written in this format is exactly the same thing as kilojoules per mole. So you basically convert Q into joules, into kilojoules, sorry, and then you divide by moles. So what you need to do is you need to work out the moles of the substance you're looking at. So calculate, calculate moles. So what is that? And then what you can do is you can either do the conversion first or you can do it last. So what you can do is you can do Q divided by a thousand divided by moles, or you can do Q divided by moles, find out what that is, and then divide it by a thousand. Divide by a thousand, exactly the same thing as 10 times 10 to minus three, okay? Either way you do it is completely fine, but you need your final answer to be in kilojoules per mole. So you need to convert the energy unit and divide by moles. Pretty simple stuff when you understand the units like that. If you want to grab yourself a free PDF formula book, check out the link down below. And you're going to be able to grab all my free resources as well.
If you're struggling with chem and you need that little bit of extra help to boost your grade as quickly as possible, check out my tuition offers. But regardless, this video should help you and put you in a good place to solve all the calculations you need to.